good morning. Up at the allotment this morning and we're going to try and get a few more plants in the ground. I've got a bit of emergency planting here to do so I'll tell you all about that in a minute. All right, let me introduce you to my sickly courgettes. Um, uh, can you see them there? Whoops. They're really not looking very well at all. Yellowing and feeble, not very big at all. Uh, I figure they're obviously deficient in something or something's not right here. Uh, the only two things that I can think that it might be is nitrogen deficiency. They're planted in a Koya compost. Um, which maybe wasn't the best thing to use. I probably wouldn't use that for seedlings again. Maybe it's something to do with that, or maybe it's um, they're too. I've kept them too wet, and the soil's a bit waterlogged. Either way, I've hardened them off, and I'm going to put them in the ground because they couldn't be doing any worse than they're doing in the pots. And I think they need to get in the ground to um, resolve whatever's wrong. If it's nutrient deficiency, the soil that I'm putting them into has got lots of good nutrient-rich compost in it and also the drainage will be better. So I'm going to put them in um, whether they're ready or not. Basically, they're going to have to go in or I think they'll just die. I'm going to put my courgettes into this raised bed here. I've got a full bed dedicated solely to courgettes. I think I've got about six or seven. And uh, arguably this border might be a bit small for seven courgette plants. But I've got a plan. Now, as I'm weeding this border out, I see I've got this little plant and that little plant over there and possibly a couple more. This is last year's New Zealand yams that I had in this board. I'm planting them elsewhere. And just like when you have potatoes that you leave in the ground and they sprout up, the yams do the same thing. I think what I'll do is I'll just leave them in because um, you don't harvest the yams until about three weeks or a month after the first frost, which could be late for us, certainly December um, was last year. So I'm going to leave them in because they stay quite small. Um, the cover the ground so I'm going to be staking my courgettes up so my plan is now plant the courgettes in and I'll let the yams grow underneath them and then the courgettes will be finished and the yams can um, carry on growing after that. Right I've weeded that border out so I've got three little New Zealand yam plants which as I see I'm going to leave in emergency measures for these poor courgettes I'm going to get them in they're in the uh, the little biodegradable uh, cardboard things that just disintegrate. I still like to peel a bit off though just to get them roots a chance to get down. Um, as I say I've got seven so I'm just gonna well I'll probably put six in equidistance and did I say I was gonna stake them when they get a bit bigger obviously providing they survive I'm gonna stake them I'm gonna try and grow them a little bit more vertically um, if you just keep taking off the bottom leaves as they grow, it helps to prevent against the powdery mildew that courgettes are so prone to. Um, and apparently you don't, the plant doesn't need the leaves below the fruits. So if you have a courgette low down, you can take off all the leaves below that and, it, uh, and that's not going to affect the growth of the fruit. So we'll start and plant them now. So usually you're going to want to wait until your plants are a good bit bigger before you put it out. Um, I mean, I would usually wait until it's got five true leaves and, you know, a bit of a more robust plant. But as I say, I think it's going to do more harm than good to delay at the minute. I'm going to be taking off those little first leaves as well because I've had it. Keeping those on isn't going to benefit your courgette at all or any plant for that matter, they're not photosynthesizing anymore. The only issue with this, putting these in so small, is if um, they do get any pest damage, it's gonna be much harder for them to bounce back from that. If your plant's bigger, it can obviously bounce back from a bit more pest damage 
but these are pretty fragile. So I put the six in there. Um, as I say, the ochre can stay quite small. Ochre is another name for New Zealand yam. That can remain quite small until later on in the season um, and it'll grow up later after the courgettes are finished. It will be a good bit of, um, what do you call that, companion planting? Side by side planting, making the most of your borders. That's certainly what it is, if it works, we'll see. I, I mean, the truth is the New Zealand yams that are in there will just be tiny little ones that I have missed um, when harvesting them last year. So whether they'll come to much of a crop, but even if I get a little bit, that'll be all right, won't it? Okay, so another thing I'm wanting to get in today is um, some tomatoes. I've got these little tumbling ones, uh, like bush variety. I figured out the difference between determinate and indeterminate. Uh, determinate is the bush variety and indeterminate is the ones that grow tall and that you have to stay. So these, I can, well, I hope they are determinate ones. I've lost all the labels, but I can just tell from the way that they're growing that they're having a tendency to um, grow back down over in a, in a bush form. So I'm going to put these around this um, raised bed in the pockets at the sides. It's like little pockets. It's made out of pallets. Um, so it's just like the ends of there and that's worked quite well in the past so we'll give that another try this year so I'm just going to put one into each of these little pockets here one per pocket don't know how many I've got I've got three of these separate ones and then I've got a few in there I'll have to have a good look at them to see if I can sort out which are the bush variety and which aren't And plant me tomatoes quite deeply because um, if you get the stalk part under the soil it'll just push out more roots and you'll have a stronger plant in the long run so don't be frightened to plant your tomatoes deep <coughs> So I managed to get seven of those in, all round in the little pockets. And the, in the when they grow up, they droop right over the edges of the uh, the pallets. It's quite pretty, really, to look at. Um, of course, they're not very big plants. Same with the courgettes. I know a lot of people with who grow to, uh, tomatoes start them off early indoors with heat mats and lights and all of that kind of equipment. <coughs> well, I haven't got anything like that. I just start them in my greenhouse, which is poor on the north wall, doesn't get a lot of warmth or light. Um, so I'm fighting against it, really. Um, but never mind, last year I got a good crop of tomatoes. And although I, I can't say I feel terribly hopeful this year because the season's been so late to start, maybe if we get a really late, long Indian summer, um, I might have a chance, but we'll see how we'll get on. They're in anyway, that's the main thing.
Well, I would say things are starting to take off at the allotment now. Everything's starting to grow. I've got quite a lot of nice flowers going on as well. I'm going to carry on and do a little bit of weeding, get my plants that I've just put in watered and uh, make the most of this warm weather. It's cloudy, but it's very warm. It's quite humid actually today. Thank you for joining me. Catch you on the next one. Bye.